The only thing that was here besides us was there was a Polish bakery over there that's closed now. This was an all working class Polish neighborhood for many years. Um, and then after us, there was an old bar down the street and across the street, the first like, you know, hip kind of like coffee shop opened like around the same time that we moved to this space. 91 was when we opened the shop down the street. We'd been in this space since 2000, but the El Cafe opened around 95 or four, something like that. But that was it. There was nothing else around here. I mean, you know, from a business point of view, I guess it's a good thing. But from a cultural point of view, I would say it's a very bad thing. I, I, you know, I think that the same thing is happening here that happened to the East Village, you know, like 20, 25 years ago. It was a very vibrant cultural, you know, area that had a lot of people who were interested in developing, uh, you know, a, a society, you know, things to give back to society, whether it be, I don't know, in the arts, in literature, whatever you want to, you know, whatever area, musicians, you know, painters, whatever. And a similar thing has happened in this neighborhood, you know, over the last 15 years or so. And it, right now it's at the tipping point. So now what's happening is all the rents are going up. They're building all these, you know, high rises that are very expensive. So the only people who can move into them are people who have a lot of money. And so that will slowly bring the rest of the rents up and all of the people who were developing a subculture here, you know, the, 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 the clubs that have evolved over the last 15 years, they're all going to go away because with the clubs can't exist without the people who run them. And so then the music scene goes away, the, the art scene goes away, just like Soho did, right? Like, you know, back in the 80s. You know, that, that scene started because large loft spaces were very cheap for artists to live and work in. But then as soon as that whole area got cleaned up, the lawyers moved in. Yeah. And like, you know, the, the business guys moved in and everything just turned into this like ridiculous, you know, uh, shopping mall. It's terrible what happened to Soho. Terrible. It happened in the West Village, you know, going back to the 50s. It happened in the East Village in the 80s and 90s. It's happening here since like the early 90s, I'd say. And it's now it's really like in really accelerated mode. I, you know, I like to think that we have an eclectic collection and that I, you know, I generally do, I'd say 95% of the selections in this store because it's a small shop and it's, it's my business and you know like I like to I like to think that I select the, the best that's available out there um, I like I I appreciate good music of all genres at this point I would say it's it's mostly new we do have a selection of used but because of the space in the store I can't do a lot of used uh, eventually that's going to change um, but yeah, it's mostly new because they're releasing a lot of and reissuing a lot of new records on vinyl now. The sale of CDs now, I'd say, is about 10 to 15 percent of my overall sale. Wow. The rest of it is mostly vinyl Crazy. and some miscellaneous items like high five gear. When, when Record Store Day happens in the spring, it's usually pretty good for us in terms of sales. Um, this last one, Black Friday, however, wasn't as gangbusters as I expected it to be. So we, we had a lot of stock that I thought would sell very quickly, and it didn't. You know, yeah. I don't know if it's like the weirdness of the economy, if it's just because it's before Christmas and people are saving their pennies for like doing like a big blowout. And stuff. Sandy. And Sandy, yes, because uh, Black Friday was uh, right after Thanksgiving, and Sandy was, you know, three weeks ago. So that had to have had a big impact, yes. And hopefully, I think people come here to maybe 
discover new things that they haven't heard before. They'll see stuff on the wall that looks really weird and obscure and they've never heard of that. And like when somebody's curious about that, it opens up a door for them. And that's that's like a big part of what I like to do, is to like maybe turn somebody on to something yeah. that they didn't Not to mention experience. the beauty of record stores versus online shopping. When you're in the store and you hear someone playing something, you sure. kind of go... Sure. Oh yeah, well that's yeah. a big thing too. I mean that's, when I was a kid, that's when I would go to a record store and somebody be playing something on the sound, so they go, oh, what's that, you know? And unfortunately there aren't enough record stores anymore. There used to be so many in New York, so many. I would say, like, say in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, when I was in college, let's say, there was probably four or five times as many record shops around the city wow. as there are now. Easily. Yeah, easily. I mean, just in the Lower East Side and downtown in Manhattan, there were probably a dozen record stores that I would go to regularly, routinely. You know, every weekend I would go, I lived in Brooklyn most of my life, so I would go into the, um, the East Village and I would just make the rounds on a Saturday afternoon, go from one record store to the other. So, um, but yeah, no, it is, it, the, the amount of record stores that have gone in that time, in, in those 30 years or whatever it is, is amazing to me. Well, the fact yeah. that we're still here yeah. and selling vinyl in 2012 is astounding to me. Astounding. I, can't, I, I thought vinyl was going to disappear by the mid-90s. Because in the early 90s, the record labels were aggressively trying to kill vinyl. And there was a time where you could... Tower Records, I remember, had... Okay, in the late 90s you could you could get all they had huge selections of vinyl right in mid 80s and I'm sorry mid 80s to mid uh, late 80s then in the, by the early 90s when CDs really fully took hold the amount of vinyl they were selling were was reduced to like a couple of small bins right you know and it was all like high end you know audiophile level vinyl and to me that was like really sad but you know there was nothing I could do about it and I, did, I wasn't involved in the record store yet so um, it's strange that it's come back to this level now, yeah. you know, which is you know it's not at the level it was say in the 70s and it probably never will be again but at least you know it's surviving and yeah. it's offering a new generation a whole new listening experience which I think is important and it's a good thing culturally